Angela's story. Our story begins in late September 2004. My husband Scott and I were beyond thrilled to find out we were pregnant. This would be our first baby and the first grandchild on both sides. Lots of excitement all around. I was one of those very unlucky people who started feeling very sick um, by week five of pregnancy. I was vomiting many times a day. I just felt overall terrible. The only comforting fact I was told by the doctors was if you are feeling sick, that means the baby is thriving. Little did we know that this little baby was going to be facing some huge challenges in the months and years to come. We were excited to find out the gender at our 20 week ultrasound, which was right around February of 2005. I was still very sick. And when you go for an ultrasound, they have you drink water. I did so, but because I was so sick and dehydrated, the technician really had problems getting any pictures. Uh, they basically told me, let's get you a level two ultrasound. Um, I guess this was actually a blessing in disguise because if I hadn't gone for that level two ultrasound, Angela could have been born without any prior knowledge of her condition. Our story could have been very different for sure. I went to Abington Hospital in Pennsylvania for my level two ultrasound with my husband, Scott. I had tried to drink as much water as I possibly could. The technician got a decent scan, so we were very happy about that. The doctor, Dr. Smith, came in and checked everything out. He said everything looks pretty good, um, and he wanted me to come back in two weeks because he was not able to see the stomach empty. Oh yeah, during that ultrasound, we found out we were having a baby girl. We were relieved that everything looked, sounded like it was normal and we were part of Team Pink. Two weeks later, later I walked into the ultrasound by myself. After all, this was just a follow-up visit. Dr. Smith and the tech sat down looking over the entire scan he had a pretty, you know, normal look on his face and all of a sudden it was different. He looked puzzled, confused. Um, he basically had me reposition, tried to do a different scan, you know, another reposition, another scan. And he said, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but something seems off. Um, he said, he made me understand that this could be absolutely nothing to worry about. But he wanted me to have it checked out at Hospital of University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And uh, they're connected to CHOP, which is Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. They just wanted to be on the safe side. Um, that appointment was on Thursday. And um, Friday morning, I got a phone call from CHOP and University of Pennsylvania saying, we'll see you Monday morning at uh, 9 a.m. That was the beginning of the longest weekend ever. We tried to remain calm over the weekend, um, but that was the toughest thing to do. You never want to think anything ever is wrong with your child. And Monday couldn't come fast enough. Monday morning, my husband and I pulled into the parking garage in the University of Pennsylvania. We had no idea what we were in for. Within moments, uh, they were taken up. I was taken up for scans. Uh, very quickly, the doctor says, your baby has CDH. I still remember that that moment. I just burst out crying. I had no idea what this all meant. Uh, really terrible thoughts raced through my mind at that point. Uh, the next few hours included lots of tests, new doctors because my I was now high risk um, and I had to switch all my doctors. Uh, lots of information, lots of information and lots of decisions we had to make. The bright part of the day was when we met with a surgeon and pulmonologist. They reviewed all the tests and scans and told us that she had left side congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Um, they said only her intestines were in her chest cavity, and she, but overall, she looked very healthy. Uh, she had no other abnormalities. So that's an awesome thing to hear. Um, we're informed that usually females with CDH actually recover much quicker. And so they felt her chances were better than many. Uh, we walked out of the hospital to our car in an absolute daze. I was scared for my little girl. I was scared for us. 
this was definitely any parent's worst nightmare. Now our goal was to keep her growing inside me as long as possible. Our goal was 40 weeks or June 18th. I was still quite sick, but managed to gain a few pounds. The doctors monitored us both frequently. Um, each ultrasound and test showed that she was growing perfectly and nothing was changing with the CDH. We got a tour of the NICU at CHOP. We got to meet other parents who pay, whose babies were in there for CDH um, and get ready for what we're going to be experiencing in the weeks to come. The doctor said to expect a minimum, minimum of a month in the NICU. Um, some babies require longer times there. Uh, they said about two months is average and only time would tell how long she'd Angela would be calling CHOP home. I woke up at week 35 and I was vomiting blood. I checked myself into the hospital in Philadelphia and they told me I was in preterm labor. Uh, my doctor checked me and said, we're going to stop this labor, give you some ulcer medicine, and then we're going to do our best to keep you pregnant for another five weeks. This will give your baby the best fighting chance. They did get the labor stopped. And little did I know, I was being discharged and I went directly to my surprise baby shower. <laughs> it was surreal because when you think of a baby shower, you think everyone's so happy. Um, I was instead, you know, not in the perfect mindset because, you know, I knew my baby had something wrong with her. I didn't know how things were going to turn out after birth. Um, it was just, it was a very strange situation. Plus, I was still not feeling well. <laughs> Uh, my baby shower is mostly gift cards and little special little gifts because we didn't know when she would come home from the hospital or what size she'd be when she did come home. In the NICU, the babies, at least at CHOP, during when she was there, they only wear diapers and the hospital provides everything else during their stay. So I didn't need all the normal stuff at this point. Definitely not your typical baby shower. At 37 weeks, we put our nursery together. We were cautious about doing it too early. Uh, yeah, her prognosis was good, but we didn't want to jinx it. We then started talking about names. After a bunch of deliberation between the two of us, we decided on the name Angela Kirsten, which means Angel of Christ. A little girl was going to need all the help she could get with the challenges she had ahead of her. At my 38-week ultrasound, I was informed that Angela was breech. <laughs> Normally, they'd try to turn babies around, but because of the CDH, they were not attempting that. Unless she changed position on her own, she was going to be born via C-section. We're scheduled for surgery um, on June, Wednesday, June 16th at 39 and a half weeks. Everything was going totally smoothly until Sunday, June 12th, around 11.30 p.m. Angela decided she wanted to get the show on the road. She broke my water. I immediately started contractions. I called the hospital. They said, come on in. I checked in around 1 a.m. My parents and sister met me down there. After getting everyone prepped for surgery, I was wheeled into the operating room around 3.30 in the morning. My husband was by my side, giving me the play-by-play, -play, since all I could see was a blue sheet. I was excited and terrified of what was going to happen next. At 4.26 on June 13th, 2005, Angela was born. There was no cry. I wasn't able to see her. She was immediately whisked away to the room next door where she was placed on the ventilator. If she had taken breaths, her lungs would have opened up and then into her, her internal organs would have been damaged. After she was stable, my husband was allowed to see her in the room before they took her to the NICU at CHOP. CHOP was next door to the hospital I gave birth at. Now, he was when he was able, when he was in that room, he was able to take a picture. Keep in mind, this is 2005. Digital cameras were brand, were pretty new, so the picture was about an inch tall. But I got to see our little girl. She was beautiful. Now her job was to fight, and fight she did. They took Angela over to the NICU, and I went back to my recovery room. After my spinal wore off, I was able to be pushed via wheelchair to the NICU at CHOP. We got to see our little baby and hold her hand. 
She was covered in so many tubes and wires, you could barely see any skin. I felt terrible for her. This isn't the start of life that I had hoped for. I wanted to hold her. I wanted her to tell her everything was going to be okay. But most of all, I wanted her to say, fight as hard as you can. The doctors and nurses filled us in on her condition. She was doing significantly better than they had expected. We were very relieved to hear this. Um, and that she needed no ECMO machine. ECMO is the heart-lung bypass machine that many CDH babies are put on uh, so that their bodies can stabilize. She was doing great on her own, which is awesome. Usually babies with CDH have to wait about a week for their hernia surgery. Because of how well she was doing, the doctors all felt that she would have hers earlier. We spent as much time in the NICU as we could. Uh, we saw babies come in and go. We even saw a few pass away. We were surprised when we were told that she was going to have surgery at three days old because these babies cannot leave uh, the OR or the NICU. The OR is brought to them. It was an incredible sight to see these huge metal cabinets rolling down the hallway, knowing they're going to be used for surgery for our baby. Dr. Holly Hedrick was a surgeon to repair her hernia. Angela's specific hernia was too large to fix with her existing diaphragm muscle, so she had a Gore-Tex patch placed in there to close the hole. The surgery seemed to take forever, but in reality, it might have taken an hour, an hour. We were so happy when and relieved when Dr. Hedrick came out and told us everything went perfectly. Now it was the time to start the healing process. It was great to see Angela after surgery. She looked totally different. She was swollen from medication and surgery itself. We could see her repair incision, which went from her belly button to her side. She was heavily medicated and would be sleeping for a while. At this point, we still hadn't heard her cry, held her, or changed her diaper. This is nothing what I ever imagined it would be like to have a newborn baby. The next few days was mostly just sitting around, sitting by her side, talking to her, holding her little hand. Each day she'd have a wire and a bunch of wires or tubes removed. She'd move around a little more. They'd reduce her medications as she was healing. I was allowed to stay at the hospital for five days after birth. Then I was discharged. Leaving the hospital without your baby was probably the worst feeling in the world. I knew she was in the best place possible and would be getting the best care possible. But I wanted to be with her. At least one of us was always there during visiting hours. The NICU was beginning to feel like our second home. The nurses began, uh, became family. We'd call and check in the morning, see how she was doing, check at night before we went to bed. It was great to hear all the really fantastic updates. On Father's Day, we arrived at CHOP to a wonderful surprise. The nurses told us we'd probably be, we would be able to hold her that day. It made Father's Day very special that year. They also said there was a chance that they'd be able to remove her ventilator. All of that did come true. We held our little girl for, girl for the first time. We heard her first raspy cry. I still remember saying to the nurse, I, that is the best sound in the entire world. The nurse sort of laughed and said, it's cute for the first few days. <laughs> and we all laughed together. Our family was feeling more like ours. Each day continued, they continued to reduce our meds. The biggest, biggest challenge for these babies is after surgery is to break the morphine habit. Most babies struggle for this with this for an extended period. I remember holding her one day and the nurses said she's going through withdrawal. She's going to start shaking. Just hold her tight and we'll give her a resty shot of morphine. It was very tough getting through that. Luckily, she didn't have to go through this for very long. Up until this point, she was being fed breast milk by only an NG tube. The NG tube basically goes directly in your nose and then down to your stomach um, so that they didn't have to use precious energy drinking from bottles on their own. Every ounce going in and coming out of their body was measured. We finally got to feed her from a bottle. It was I was able to change her diaper. I was finally doing mommy stuff for her. By day 16, I walked into the NICU and saw on Angela's board, I'm getting ready to go home. We were absolutely shocked. 
uh, she still had a few tests to pass um, to prove she was ready for to be released, but it was getting closer. We had to learn how to put the NG tube in and baby CPR. We had to go to Babies R Us and get all the basics for her to come home because we really had nothing. She was coming home much earlier than we anticipated. Uh, we had to make sure the car seat and base was installed. We were bringing home our baby and it was incredible. The next morning, we walked into the NICU, hoping today would be the day that we got to bring her home. The nurses checked everything off that list. The surgeon, pulmonologist, and every other doctor in the world came in to talk to us. The nurses were all smiles when they were packing up all of her items from her station. They loved happy endings. They didn't always have happy endings. So when they had them, it made their job seem totally worthwhile. We were all prepared. We were as prepared as we possibly could be. Now parenting really began. We waved goodbye to everyone at CHOP on the 30th of June. Angela was a fighter from day one. Because of that, she was out of the hospital in 17 days. She left the hospital on no medications at all. Besides her NG tube and incision, she looked like every other newborn baby. This was all new for all of us. Angela had never been outside the hospital. She never rode in a car. We never know what to do with a baby. <laughs> this will be a learning process for us all. The NICU wasn't the best environment to get her onto a good sleep schedule. She was up at crazy hours a night, slept on and off during the day. She would drink from her bottle, but still had the NG tube because if she didn't drink at all in a certain amount of time, we had to use that as a backup plan. That sounded really good until the first night she was home. She got annoyed by that tube and ripped it out of her nose. Um, we were very upset and worried. Uh, while we knew how to put it back in, we didn't really want to because it's not a fun process. We called the hospital and they said, sometimes babies know when they don't need that anymore. So they said, let's give it a try, see how it works. And she knew. She knew she didn't need it anymore. She drank like a champion from that bottle from that day on. She went in for normal checkups at the pediatrician and went down to CHOP as recommended. She was such a, she amazed everyone at how well she had recovered. She was a strong little girl. She continued amazing doctors month by month. When normal babies were crawling, she just walked right into their office. She scored high on all of her physical and cognitive tests. Babies in the NICU many times need different kinds of therapies because they have developmental issues due to their stay in the NICU. We were fortunate that never happened. She was ahead of the curve from day one, and that continues today. And here's Angela. Hi, I'm Angela. I'm 15 years old. I'm in 10th grade, and I go to West Bend West High School. I do swimming and track for my school. Right now, my favorite subject is math. In my free time, I like to hang out with my friends and listen to music and watch TV and movies, normal things teenagers do. Um, I work at a local pizza shop and I look forward to driving in December. Um, my goals after high school are to go to college and become a nurse. And most of the time, I don't even remember I was born with this defect because I just don't even, it's unaffected me for my whole life already, so, yeah. As you can see, Angela is a normal, normal healthy teenager. She proudly wears her scar and is always happy to tell people her story. Her story. Most people are amazed to hear what she's endured. She's an, she has an incredible work ethic and we know with her, the sky is truly the limit. We are fortunate to have a story with a very happy ending. In 2004 and 2005, the internet was very much different than it is today. Facebook was in its infancy. Web-based support groups were just beginning. I got most of our medical information from a book or from the doctors. I remember telling my mom the diagnosis um, on the way home, talking on my flip phone. Um, 
And she is a nurse and she ran to her medical books and she was looking this up because she had never heard of this. Uh, I was given information at the hospital about a group called Cherubs. Um, so I went online. I found out that site was full of stories and information about all versions of CDH. Just knowing there were others out there who have also dealt with all this stuff was a huge comfort. Before Angela, I had never heard of congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Now I was able to read about what others have gone through, ask questions from a parent's point of view, which is very different than a doctor's point of view, um, and be supportive because, and be supported because there were many tough days and I didn't know who else to ask. Um, it was truly like a family. My real family was super supportive, but no one understands what it's like unless you've gone through that particular situation. This is where the support groups helped me immensely. Today, I love being part of CDH groups, helping new parents get through what we did and seeing other CDHers grow up, have healthy children and lead incredible lives. After all, this is the goal for, a, for each of our children. CH, CDH International has done an incredible job getting out, getting CDH mainstreamed. Their support, information, and compassion has made a huge difference in many families' lives. We'll always be proud to be part of this incredible family. I love talking about our story and getting the word out about CDH. No parent ever wants to hear the word defect regarding their child. But thanks to great advancements in medicine, incredible health care, and groups like CDH International, increasing awareness and funding research, the future of our CDHers are brighter by the day.